In the PRISM project, we also study social withdrawal in animals. And the idea would be is that we want to unravel the neurobiology under, underlying these phenotypes and to selectively alter certain neural circuits that may be driving these behaviors, we have to use a model system that are predictive for the social withdrawal symptoms in, in humans. For that reason, we use rodent models to study social interaction in animals and to alter particular biological substrates in the brain and to see how much they contribute to these phenotypes. In PRISM, we use a quite novel approach where we want to back-translate findings coming from human studies into animals. Traditionally, people have used preclinical studies in animals to identify novel mechanisms and then went on to test those in humans. Whereas PRISM does it the other way around. So we identify first what biological parameters cluster these patient populations in a homogeneous manner, and then use those inf that information to back translate that to the animal studies. The big question is, of course, how to assess social withdrawal and how to implement an animal model of social withdrawal uh, based on this patient information. So within the PRISM project, we use social interaction stu studies where we monitor individual animals longitudinally, look at their social interaction features. Then we hope to identify social withdrawal in some of these animals that is resembling the features in human beings. The, the selection of these models is of course quite difficult because how do you select an animal model for social withdrawal? In that respect, we use the information coming from the genetic findings in the human studies, where we try to identify molecular landscapes, identifying particular signaling pathways that hopefully contribute to this phenotype, and that can then be tested, functionally validated in these animals. Social behavior has multiple parts of it. You have the approaches, the actual contact, but you can also run away. And these are things that can change if you have a disorder. So what we try to do is figure out um, what leads to changes in these behaviors. So when does a, a mouse stop uh, doing social behavior? And then we try to link this back to the human disease. So with this novel technology in animals, where we can now follow these animals over multiple days and look at very clear social interactions at the individual level, we hope that we can identify a homologous measure of social withdrawal in animals that allow us then to study the neurobiology underlying these features and find out whether the neurobiology of social withdrawal in certain Alzheimer patients either resemble or is different from that in, for example, patients with schizophrenia.